This is Vacuum Cleaning Systems, written by M.S. Cooley, Maxwell Stevens Cooley, in 1913. M.S. Cooley was an engineer, mechanical engineer, in the office of the Supervising Architect of the Treasury Department in Washington, D.C. And as this book, um, which was published by the Heating and Ventilating Magazine Company, is out of copyright and it's public uh, public domain you can find this on Google who have so kindly digitized the whole thing along with many 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 other obscure books and so I just printed my copy off the internet and since then you can actually order a nice hardbound reprint on Amazon and I guess that's that's made to order you order one and they they just do these these one-off um, printings of these books and that's pretty cool but this goes into exhaustive detail of the state of the art of vacuum cleaning and it's really worth looking at if you're interested but just for the purpose of this video which this is the second take because the first one became very very long I'm going to try and go a little more quickly and do just some highlights especially where there are neat pictures Here's the earliest photo of a central vacuum in use. Uh, 1907, David Kenny, there on the left. Uh, and David Kenny was the gentleman who received a patent on the basic idea of using air to uh, produce suction through a nozzle and pick up dirt. And from the time he got that patent in 1907 until it expired in the 20s, Everybody who wanted to manufacture a vacuum cleaner had to get a license from David Kenny, who was not a manufacturer. He just owned the patent and cashed the checks. So you will see a little badge on any vacuum cleaner. It says licensed under Kenny patent. It's got a little picture of a nozzle. And there's the first vacuum producer. That was in the Frick building in New York City. Um, used as vacuum pumps, commercial air compressors. Look at that thing. So it's an air compressor, but running in reverse. There's your separators. Primary separator, the air would come in there. That would be a dry separator, and this would be a wet separator. Here's a portable vacuum. This was the Invincible Electric Renovator. Light and portable for the little lady of the house to take up the stairs. Also, uh, the first use of stationary multi-stage turbines, as opposed to the reciprocating air compressor type. Mr. Ira Spencer organized the Spencer Turbine Cleaner Company using a modification of the Orgoblow, Oregon blower. Machines were first constructed with sheet metal casings and had sheet steel fans with wings riveted on and mounted on horizontal shafts. Lightweight hose two inches in diameter was used to connect the renovators. Throughout this book it calls the carpet nozzle, or the, the nozzle, a renovator. Uh, to four inch sheet metal pipelines. System was operated at five inches of vacuum, which was much lower than that used by any other system, 15 inches being standard at that time. Keep in mind, any vacuum measurement in this book is going to be in inches of mercury, which is 13.59 times heavier than water. So a reading of 135 inches of water lift is only 10 inches of mercury. So this measure that the Spencer machine operated at was about 70 inches of water lift. Owing to the large volume of air and the large size of the renovators, hose and pipelines, larger articles could be picked up than was possible with any of the existing systems. A favorite stunt was to pick up nails, washers, waste, small pieces of paper, and even pea coal, and finally pick up a quantity of flour. This invasion of the vacuum cleaning field was considered by the established manufacturers as a freak, and the apparatus was christened the tin machine. Whenever it was installed in competition with other forms of cleaning systems, the daily question asked by its competitors was, has the tin machine fallen apart? However, the tin machine did not fall apart, but held its own with the other systems, even in its crude and inefficient state. 
Mr. Spencer adopted a new form of machine using cast iron casing and welded fan wheels and adopted standard pipe and fittings. This talks about renovators, starting with the type A, the straight slot carpet tool, the narrow slot. Um, 12 inches long, not over 3 eighths of an inch wide. And then there's type B, the wide slot. Type C with the inrush slot to make it easier to push. The air would kind of bypass and come in so it wouldn't glue itself down to the carpet. Type D with two cleaning slots. Type F, and that was the Spencer carpet tool. Cleaning slot 10 inches long and three quarters of an inch wide. Spencer also made an extra wide one, one quarter inch to three quarter inch slot. So it would start out at three quarter and go down to one quarter inch at the ends. That's type F1. We've got some charts. Vacuum and renovator, air exhausted in CFM, material removed, percent of total, horsepower per ounce of sand, ounces of sand per minute, organized by the different type of renovators. So you can see type A would be narrow slot, type C with the inrush slot, type F and F1, the, the Spencer wide tools. And you can see they, in this test, did the best job. There are some other tests in here where they didn't do the best job. Or they did a job comparable to type A. But also, as this text goes into, because the type A renovator didn't need to exhaust nearly as much air to develop a high velocity inside of it, um, it was uh, using less power than the wide slot tool. But at the disadvantage that it couldn't suck anything up. They uh, measured the effort necessary to operate the cleaning tools. Vacuum at renovator, pull in pounds, air in cubic feet per minute. And you can see the type A renovator, which was basically like a carpet cleaning wand you would see today, took a lot of force to move over the carpet. Type F renovator operated with a, a lower uh, vacuum system, even though it was moving more air, was quite a bit easier to move around. Goes into bare floor renovators. The earliest attempt was just take the metal nozzle and put a wheel on it. Then they tried a brush, then they tried felt. And they tried felt with cutouts in it. This is similar to the, the Lindhaus bare floor tool that you can still get with the felt pad on it. I think that works pretty well. And then here was the, you can tell that's a Spencer tool. Hard felt or composition rubber strips. Air floor renovator with rounded wearing surface. That'd be like a filter queen felt pad today. Uh, this is neat. The United Electric Company, known as the 2X School Tool. This is a bare floor tool, telescopic, mounted on three wheels, fitted with guide rails. A turbine motor is arranged to drive two of the wheels. Placed opposite the front of a row of desks, the clutch engaged propels the tool through the space between the desk legs to the rear of the room. When the tool strikes the wall at the rear of the room, the clutch is disengaged and it is pulled back by drawing in the hose. The use of this form of tool should result in considerable saving of time in cleaning school rooms. I'd love to find one of these. 
somewhere in a school somewhere in a basement there's one of these and probably nobody has any idea what it is looks like a sled you've got the rails there there was the hose connection inside here would have been a turbine and uh, there was a pre-filter of course but the turbine of course didn't drive a brush roll like any other turbine powerhead uh, it just uh, drove the wheels and then the suction reached just a slot, a bare floor tool. Crazy. I've got some Tuek ads from school publications. That was around from like 1913, but by 1920 something the ads weren't talking about the school tool anymore. Here's a picture from a Spencer advertisement that shows the Spencer hose swivel allowing the hose to hang straight down and that saves a lot of wear on the hose and makes it a lot easier for the operator to move the hose and the wand around. This would have been an inch and a half hose bigger than what the other manufacturers were using at the time. And the amazing thing is today you can still get from Spencer, their standard equipment is still this exact hose end, different hose material of course, this same hose swivel, this same wand, and this same carpet tool. Ira Spencer came up with the designs of these items over a hundred years ago. <clears throat> There's the Spencer hose end. This is the end that you put into the wall inlet that can also be put into the, um, the tool end of another hose to lengthen them. And this is the rubber coupling with the slide lock on it that holds the the other end in place. The all rubber has the advantage when it is properly locked, it cannot be pulled apart. It is absolutely airtight, which is true of no other coupling. Ira Spencer was a genius inventor to go through and make improvements to every part of the system, system uh, unlike what other manufacturers had done. Here's a chart with the friction loss of different hoses based on the length of the hose from 25 to 100 feet and the diameter of the hose. And you can see you can have up to 10 inches of friction loss, up to 130 inches of water lift lost through a hose if you are running, let's see, See, this is where I get lost. It must be too early in the morning or something, but pretty neat. Horsepower at hose cock. So this isn't the horsepower of the motor that's running in the basement. This is the uh, calculation of the amount of horsepower that is actually available to do work at the end of the hose, which they refer to as the hose cock, because a valve in those days was often called a cock, before we all had filthy minds, I guess. So you can see that the shorter hoses needed more horsepower than the longer hoses, because the, sh the longer hoses are not able to move as much air through them and less air movement means less horsepower being used. So this book does make the point that extra long hoses and extra small hoses are more electrically efficient to give a given amount of vacuum at the end of the hose uh, as long as you don't mind sweeping the carpet with a broom before you vacuum it so that nothing of any size is on the carpet to get sucked up. In these days, you could get up to 100 feet of hose with a system. And the author, let's see, the author does not consider that the advantage to be obtained by the adoption of a shorter length of hose justifies the additional expense of piping, which will result in many cases. And this is the opposite of what a company like Spencer would say. And I've got a little Spencer booklet that says, 
uh, the hose is the greatest restriction and uh, wears out the quickest and is the hardest thing to move around. And so Spencer said is it is obvious that plenty of piping and inlets should be used and a shorter hose. So Mr. Cooley did not agree with Spencer in that case. Here's a Spencer wall inlet, the flush type with a little hook that would hold the hose into place. And again, Spencer was the state of the art. Everybody else was using Looks like a gas line sticking out of the wall with either a valve on it or a little plug, a little cap attached with a piece of chain. Now oh, let's see. When the inlets are located in public places, they should be fitted with a lock attachment to prevent them from being opened by people like me whenever I go into an old building and find an old central vac inlet. I turn into a little kid again. Shows you how to make up piping in different ways for different branches, the right way and the wrong way. So even then they knew that the three-way tees were no good. Talking about sizing the system, the piping, uh, when the renovator is raised from the carpet, the air quantity will be upwards of 90 cubic feet, equivalent to 110 cubic feet, velocity of 33 feet per second, too low to thoroughly flush a horizontal pipe. So they're actually, depending on, in their calculations, uh, raising the nozzle off the floor to clear the lateral piping of debris. And it does make the note, the dependence on raising of the renovator from the floor to flush out a larger pipeline should not be carried beyond that to be abstained from a single renovator. Good idea. Number of sweepers. So this talks about the um, amount of floor space on average that one sweeper can clean. And this is used in calculating how many sweepers your plant needs to be set up for based on the size of your building. 2,500 square feet of carpet per hour, 1,500 when they're in small rooms, up to 7,200 square feet per hour on bare floors uh, is, is optimal. 5,000 on average, 3,500 square feet as a fair average. Because if your cleaning people are paid by the hour, there's no way they're going to move fast enough to clean 7,000 square feet of hard floor in an hour. Goes into the um, diagrams of piping. There's an office building. So this will show you the basement piping. And here are your wall inlets. One, no, one, two, three, and four. And then your wall inlets would just be in the same place on every floor. These would be the indication of your risers and however many floors there would be, there'd be that number of inlets on that riser. Here's an interesting diagram of a system used to clean train cars, um, passenger train cars like Pullman cars. And uh, when you lay it out like this, you have way too much airflow over here and not nearly enough over here, even despite the, the graduated pipe sizes. So they figured out the way to set it up is like this. So your branch lines are half as long and they come into a large central main line. So you got four inch, four inch, and then you've got a big six inch line going down to the separator. This talks about the different types of separators. They class them into primary and sep secondary. The primary separators were all just cyclonic. Here's the different takes that the different manufacturers had on cyclonic separators. Look at that thing. And then your secondary separators, because if you were using a reciprocating pump, you couldn't have any dust coming through, so you had to catch it in water. This would force the air in underneath the water line. And then this would be your, your clean air going out to the pump. So this operated kind of like a Thermax. 
And uh, you can also have a dry secondary separator with just a bag in it. And here's that with a little gauge to show you when the bag is clogged. Here's an Invincible. And uh, so you've got a cyclonic separator. The air would come down here, fall into the bucket, the dirt would. And then you have a, a pleated cloth filter up here. This is basically the exact kind of separator you'll see on a car wash central vacuum today. It's called a tubular bag separator. And there'd be a door that you would open up to this section and then you can take the bags out and throw them in the washing machine. Here's an Arco wand. The air comes in and this upside down funnel flares out towards the bottom so the air is not coming in very, or the dirt's not coming in very fast. It's just kind of lazily dropping down. And then you have a fabric filter stretched over the this part. Very large surface area. And because those Arco wands didn't move a whole lot of air, it worked. Here, this one would discharge to a sewer. One would be in use, and then when that one would get too full, it would automatically switch over, and this one would be in use while this one drained. Horrendously complicated, but neat. Spencer. So here's your separator. Here's your turbine. The air comes in from the top, goes through the impellers. This looks like it's got about 10 impellers. And your exhaust to the, to the chimney would have been on the bottom. There's an invincible turbine. Centrifugal pump with a single impeller is manufactured by the United Electric Company and known as the TUEC. Do not produce a vacuum greater than 3 inches of mercury, the impeller being 24 inches in diameter. Vacuum at the renovator is 1 and 3 quarter inches mercury and passes approximately 50 CFM while the bare floor renovators pass approximately 95 CFM. They are extensively used where bare floor work is required, their first cost being low. And there's a 2X. Motor on top single impeller, inlet here with a screen and a clean out door above the screen. So you can't get to the side that actually has the dirt on it. I guess you just brush the dirt off and hope it fell down through the screen. And then it's got a little litter box that you take out and empty. Here's a steam powered central vacuum separator with a steam aspirator and uh, this had to be pretty neat, but very costly. The amount of steam it required was horrendously high. So only if you had a steam generating plant on premises would this be practical. And uh, this goes into calculating out whether it's more effective to use the steam to produce the vacuum directly or use the steam to generate electricity and just use an electric vacuum. Amazing that this, you know, at this point, this wasn't settled. So he actually had to go through and analyze that. Oh, yeah, well, would a steam vacuum actually work? Closest thing we have today to that would be a compressed air powered vacuum cleaner. This is interesting. This gizmo is all to regulate the amount of vacuum or the, the speed of the motor on a reciprocating central vacuum pump uh, to produce a consistent level of vacuum uh, depending on how much air is being moved, how many operators are on the system. So this will take, this diaphragm would have been connected to the piping system. And depending on the level of vacuum, it would vary the speed of the pilot motor, which is this guy. And the pilot motor would then drive a rheostat, varying the speed of the turbine motor. Again, horrendously complicated. Or you can just install a centrifugal system and then it does it automatically. 
another Spencer invention that I would love to find, but again, I have no hope of finding, is the vacometer. This was a brass globe with a ring around the middle with different holes drilled in it that you could turn. So you could measure with this vacuum gauge, the vacuum at a one half inch orifice, which is a type A renovator, narrow slot, or a five eighths inch orifice, which is a type F renovator, or a seven eighths inch orifice, which is a bare floor renovator. So you can test the performance of your system and different, different manufacturer systems using that. Spencer no longer makes the vacometer, sadly. Specifications for systems. Portable vacuum cleaners. On the first consideration, the portable cleaner would appear to have a considerable advantage over the stationary type in that the length of hose is usually limited to not over 15 feet and there is no pipeline. This should result in a saving of practically 50% of the power required to operate the exhauster. Such a cleaner would not be portable in the sense of the term as applied to the popular cleaners today. The power required is so great that special power wiring and large capacity outlet plugs have to be installed. This means that one wires his building for vacuum cleaning instead of piping it and there is also the necessity of moving a heavy machine about. There's another type of mechanical cleaner manufactured by the Hoover Suction Sweeper Company, which is provided with a mechanically operated brush. The dirt is then conveyed through a single stage fan to a dust bag. The cleaner does not depend on the vacuum to loosen the dirt and will do quite effective carpet cleaning with a small expenditure of power. Owing to the small suction produced, it is of little value for cleaning anything but carpets. The use of such cleaners is not considered as either an efficient or sanitary means of mechanical cleaning. Amen, sister. The selection of a portable cleaner by one who must necessarily resort to the use of such a cleaner should be made with care. The motor should be looked into and only one which has brushes readily removable and one in which the condition of the brushes can be easily noted should be selected. A good cleaner should be so constructed that it can be operated for at least 100 hours without relubrication. Yes. Make sure you take apart your portable vacuum and relubricate it every 100 hours. Here, talking about the portable vacuums is the first time they make use of the water lift measurement because the suction was so much lower. Three inches of water, a first class machine will show eight inches of water. Cleaners must be readily portable and should not weigh exceeding 75 pounds. Today, your home central vacuums are less than 75 pounds. Amazing. Well, this, this book, I believe, is still in, in the possession of the University of California at Berkeley. So if anybody wants to go check it out and send it to me, hopefully you have enjoyed this video. And again, this book is available online if you wish to go through the whole thing. Thank you for watching.